Sunny Games here. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I set myself a challenge. <laughs> I set a challenge basically to fit every character home in the game into one biome. Now, realistically, that was always going to be impossible um, because of the amount of water-based uh villager homes and stuff like that so i decided to amend the challenge a little bit and uh basically make it one and a half biomes so i have made use of a little bit of dazzle beach um as part of this challenge um so that basically i could include all those water houses and things like that now you may be asking why why have you done this why have you done this it seems stupid um well actually it's it, it's based off of a lot of feedback that i have been seeing on social media um or at least i had been seeing a little bit ago about people concerned about the size of the valley and the amount of characters we have and are going to get um I do see a lot of people sort of saying, oh, we're gonna need the DLC in order to kind of like fit all the characters that are coming free to play. So we're sort of forced into buying the DLC. Um, I've seen people saying that there's no room in the valley for more characters and stuff like that. And realistically, I think there's plenty of room. I think there is a lot of room. Um, and I don't think <laughs> the situation is quite as bad as it, it seems. Um, so that's why I set myself this challenge, just to sort of showcase how much room there actually is in the valley. If you squeeze things in, if you tighten things up a little bit. Now, what I will say with this challenge is that obviously I've, I've squeezed all these houses into one biome. Realistically, would I ever do this? no because i think certain houses fit in certain biomes i think anna and christoph's house fit well in the frozen biome i think jack skeleton's house fits well in the forgotten lands um so realistically the houses would be spread out into areas anyway because i think certain homes look better in better areas or biomes whatever you want to call it um so realistically, if I was going to decorate my valley, they, these houses wouldn't all be in one biome. They would be spread out based on their aesthetics. Um, but I think it goes to show that if I can fit all the current character houses into basically one biome, that we do have a lot of room in the game and things like that. So why don't I show you what I've come up with. There is going to be a speed build part of this video because I do want to actually decorate the meadow. Um, <laughs> I just think that like, it, it's all well and good plonking houses, but you still want to decorate it. You still want to make it look nice and things like that. So I'll just show you the base of what we're working with um, before we go into that. So I have used the meadow and then I've also used this part of Dazzle Beach. Now, I did debate about whether or not I should use this half. Um, but because this half is really, really big, um, I realised I could do so much more. Like, Eric's house would be here and I would do so many more houses on the beach. Um, but since this is kind of like a challenge, I wanted to fit this into as much tight space as possible. Now, there is one slight issue with my challenge. Um, I can't remove the the mushrooms. I don't have that ability yet on this save. And we have recently just got in all these um, pictures of Donald, which are part of Stitch's quest line. Um, so that's a bit of fun there. <laughs> That's a bit of fun so we're gonna have to decorate around that as well um as i said realistically i wouldn't have all these houses in one biome uh this would definitely be in the frozen biome personally i think out of all the biomes vanellope's house looks nice in the frosted heights so i'd probably put that up there with the anna and elsa house um again sort of uh, jack skeleton's house would be up here um, personally, I think like Scar's house and Skull Rock are perfect here where they are in the sunlit, or well, Scar's at least in the sunlit plateau. And I usually put Simba and Nala there too. Um, so realistically, I wouldn't have all these set down here in 
the meadow but just for the purposes of this video and entertainment we're doing things a bit different um and obviously there's certain things <laughs> i can't line this down um closer and stuff like that which is annoying um and now i've messed there we go <laughs> um i would probably put these in a more uniform line and if i didn't have to squeeze in like wally's car and stuff here um i think you could make a better kind of like city hall spacing here or toontown spacing um but like i said all purposes of the challenge so we fit a lot of houses in one area that we wouldn't but this just goes to show if you can fit this many houses down here and if i can make this look somewhat decent because it's not going to be perfect obviously because i think some of these houses just don't suit the meadow um but if i can make it somewhat decent i mean this shows you you've got all of this dazzle beach you have all of the um Forest of Valor, which actually I think the Forest of Valor is probably a better place to decorate in um, if you were going to do something like this because I feel like the Forest of Valor, just with its layout, is way bigger than the meadow. <laughs> um, you could do so much with this. I mean, I, I, I think I'd quite happily redo this challenge and do it in the forest and just ignore kind of like any of the beach homes and stuff like that. Um, because I think with the spacing and the fact that there's less interruptions like here with all the ponds, you can get more structured builds or you can choose the shaping as you want. Obviously, we've got a bit of ice stuff here, so you could easily fit Anna and Kristoff's house here and it wouldn't look weird. Um, so aesthetically, I think the forest would have been a better place to have done this in. Obviously, we've got the plaza. Now, usually I tend to keep Scrooge's shop and uh remy's restaurant here in the plaza i just feel it makes the most sense but um as i said for the purposes of this video we're not doing that uh we've got the sunlit plateau you can see how massive this is and the forest and uh, not the forest the forgotten land so also i've got a chest there i better get that <laughs> but you can see sort of just how much space is about oh i didn't even talk about the blade I've still got the glade as well. Obviously, Mother Gothel's house is in the glade. You can't do anything about it. That's fixed. Um, I have left Wally's garden and uh, Moana's boat and stuff out of the picture. I mean, I don't have Moana's boat built, but I just felt like they were irrelevant for the purposes of this. Um, I think this is kind of a fun challenge to do and really kind of just shows that if you condense or really focus about your builds you can fit a lot of um houses into a small area um but yeah my main goal for this is going to be to make it aesthetic that's what i'm going to be working on um so i'm gonna wrap up talking here we'll cut into a speed build portion of the video um and you'll see me try and decorate this now obviously i think one of the biggest challenges with decorating this is going to be the fact that this is my new save so i don't really have much in the way of like pathing fences stuff like that um so i think if anything that's going to be where the biggest challenge comes in um is literally just being able to aesthetically decorate it because of limited availability of items but we are going to try our best um so yeah as i said i'm gonna leave it here wrap up and we're gonna go into a spill speed build portion and then i'll come back at the end just to take a little walk through and sort of explain any thought processes and things like that so yeah be back in a bit <laughs>
Okay, and there we have it. That was the speed build portion. So I've done a bit of decorating and things like that around all the different houses and stuff like that. It's nothing too ornate or fancy, but just something so that each kind of building almost has its own decor and stuff like that. So why don't we start off down here? I did just put a nice little cool chill area with these lounge pillows. I thought that could be nice. You could certainly, if you had food dishes or anything like that, cook them up, drop them on the floor. Um, you could certainly put some plants around here as well, just to make it more aesthetically pretty. Then we move on. We have Buzz's house now. I'm using Buzz's house like as if it's a car. Um, so I didn't really do any decor around there. We have a cute little fishing spot. I thought that might be fun near Donald's boat. Um, my main house doesn't have much decor, but I would literally just put some foliage here and stuff like that. Wally's house doesn't really have any decor. Again, kind of sort of using it as almost like a, um, a car kind of vehicle and stuff like that. As I said, with some of these houses, I wouldn't necessarily have them in the meadow and Wally's house is one of them and I think if I placed it elsewhere in the valley it would be decorated a bit differently um but just for the purposes of this challenge it's almost acting like a car I did decorate with a few trees here and there we have Goofy's stall here and we also have the little um, crafting bench now Goofy's house is one that sat forward a bit just because of this sign um so I can't really accommodate that. Then we have a little like chess area outside of Mickey's house with his broom and the little um, outfit mannequin. Uh, we also have a little cute little bench here as well and the Mickey tower. <laughs> um, we also have a little seating area for Minnie. I, I couldn't really think of ways to decorate for Minnie. She's very much a flowers kind of girl. Um, so I haven't done much and there's a little coffee kind of like car between Minnie and Daisy's house along with another little flower decoration. We have the little um, kind of like popsicle stick that we got with the star path. We have this picnic blanket which is from the Frozen collection. It's Anna's picnic hey, set and I set that up with a little like uh, record player and then also some apples so again like you can just add food to this kind of setup and then I've also got the Toontown washing machine now since Daisy technically has the biggest yard space that's why I tried to throw quite a bit of decor in there uh, we also have the bike here Wally's bike I think this is such a cute item to decorate with I love the flowers in the front of the bike so I put this outside of Remy's house along with just some foliage options as well now coming around here we have Scrooge's shop so I put down a couple of the park benches and the banner I wanted it to look very royal and grand so we've got a lot of the gold vases and things like that um, to decorate outside of Scrooge's now outside of the Monsters Inc house I did want to kind of set it up almost like a university so this is like a little it could either be like a little protest spot um, or it could just be like a kind of like a community meetup vibe and then we've got all the books as well which I thought was kind of pretty in keeping with like a university vibe then we have Remy's restaurant here and of course I had to decorate with the uh, tables and some chairs and I also put the little companion item here as well because I thought that worked quite nicely now just for this middle stretch I've just put the Mickey uh, fountain here just to show how much space there is really um, you could certainly do a really cute walkway how I might decorate this is if I had the iron and brick fencing is I might do the fencing all the way down with gaps going off to the left and right side and then just line it with seating, lights, um, some foliage like bushes and stuff like that but this just shows how wide this space is obviously you can't put path in under here so um, I think if I had the resources I would have done like a, a lined walkway to the beach because I think that would have looked cute and then I would have just had the um, the well in the middle because I think that would have been adorable to see then I use these uh, rock stepping stones to transition to like the frozen area 
very simple decor here we've just got like a cute bench we do have a frozen fountain and then we've got the little snowgy um here so that's all the decor pretty much for the frozen castle moving along down here oh <laughs> oh don't you just love this invisibility glitch um moving down here we've got vanellope's house now not all the characters i have are leveled up um so i don't have like all the items necessarily uh so i just thought i'd decorate with a few of the arcade thingies do a bit of um a sweet path down here um just to make it more in keeping for vanellope's house as i said realistically if i was decorating an entire valley i wouldn't have vanellope's house in the meadow um i'd probably have her up in the frosted heights then we've got Mirabelle's house. I wanted to do kind of like a party vibe outside, like a friendly gathering. So I thought a birthday party might be cute. Um, I think these uh, balloons have gone invisible. Yeah, they have. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just thought I'd decorate with that. I like the rustic laundry basket and stuff like that. And the celebration stuff seemed to make sense. Then we've got um, Fairy Godmother's house, which I've naturally decorated with her bench and some pumpkin decor. So the vine flower lamp, this uh, pumpkin like flower planter and just some pumpkins. And then we move into a more rustic-y pathing. We've got the um, little well here thing, um, whatever you call it. <laughs> and then this leads on to Merlin's library now I have Merlin's library placed here with Jack Skeletons now this is a bit that I struggled with a little just because of the pathing I couldn't get it like through here <laughs> so I just ended the pathing here and moved to like a stone walkway um, but I thought putting the books in between for like both Jack Skeleton great. and uh, Merlin would make sense because they both are interested in knowledge in inventions in discovering and things like that and i felt the books were like the perfect addition so i went with the jack skeleton bookcase and then i went with the book piles to kind of match i thought that would be nice and obviously merlin being as knowledgeable as he is i had to use the telescope and also the globe because i felt like it was just in keeping for kind of like his first for knowledge and stuff like that outside of scar's house we've got his lounging rock rock and some of these wildebeest remains um i wanted to keep his outside a bit sort of drier again i would leave scar where he is in the sunlit plateau personally i think that's the perfect spot for him um and then to the left we've got kind of like the um little oasis thing we've got the waterfall we've got the little simba night light because that's the cutest with like a leaf rug we've got a cute little seating area here and a bench so again these realistically if i was decorating my valley fully they would be located in the sunlit plateau so um at least the decor would kind of merge in with the ground a bit more cohesively and then here we've got our sort of like princess <laughs> realm area i guess you could say so i've done this cute little um beauty and the beast blanket here we do have the beauty and the beast castle we've got the topiary because i figured like the formal topiary makes sense um and then we've got prince eric's house as well um which realistically this could work really well on the beach i do think the beach is a great place for his house um but i went with the main street pathing because i felt like it was it felt quite regal and formal enough to kind of like join the two buildings together and in terms of the coloring works really well um i have got a couple of frozen decor items over there in the back um i think i can get to them from here yeah you can <laughs> so we just got this little tub and water thing so yeah that is it for the um the meadow part of this build and then we head down into the beach now obviously i've got three beach houses here i've got um ursula's house i've got maui's house and i've got ariel's house there's not much you can do in terms of decor for these unless you do like um the kind of the rocks that can go into the water so you have this rock here and the large rock 
Um, also, I didn't realize I had access to these things. That's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, you can do them and you can do some of the, like the water underbrush, which is things like the, uh, the reeds, you've got, um, the cattails and then you've also got some of the water lilies. So I didn't bother decorating the water in that sense because, um, it's kind of very set and you can just choose how you want to present them. Uh, generally speaking, I usually have Ursula down here. I think she works quite nicely in the glade. Um, Maui, I usually like to keep over here because of the rocks, like when I've done my builds before, because I think it blends in a bit nicer. Um, and then Ariel just gets plonked wherever Ariel gets plonked. <laughs> but yeah, these are water houses, so realistically, you're only going to be decorating with this kind of foliage and... So I didn't bother putting any effort into that. But what I have well, done is I have decorated the beach. So for Stitch's house, we've got the lifeguard tower. We've got a cute little bench here. Oh, look at Merlin snoozing away with his like little Z's coming out of him. That was cute. Um, and then we've also got the surfboards as well. Now, I thought the carousel made sense on the beach. Um, there are often, at least in my experience of going to some sort of beaches and stuff like that, you tend to get like arcade areas and um, almost like funfair kind of vibes with the coast. Um, so I thought Woody's carousel wouldn't seem too weird on a beach setting. Um, I have decorated with just some Toy Story items and the uh, popcorn thingy, I thought that would work. Then I've got my usual beach decor, like beach chairs. We've got the towels and parasols. This refreshment thing really makes me think of being younger and going with those cool boxes to the beach. Um, we do have the Moana set up here, which we've got a couple of the mats. We've got the beach banquet. We've got the palm trees and the hammock. And we've got this little um, seating area as well. So, oh, and I do have Eric's statue still here. Um, <laughs> he doesn't need to be there, but he is there. Um, but yeah, there you have it. That is every character house in Disney Dreamlight Valley fitted into one and a half biomes for you there. Um, let me know what you thought of this. Um, will you be using any of these ideas kind of going forward in order to maximize the space that you have in your valley kind of thing, if that makes sense? Like being able to fit items into a smaller area so you've got room for any other potential villagers coming to the game like Mulan and Tiana and stuff like that. You'll have to let me know. I assume a lot of us do have the DLC but I know not everyone does. Um, so hopefully these this gave you ideas of ways you can kind of like put compact builds together and stuff like that. Um, and how every build doesn't have to be a big masterpiece, a grand building with lots of items and stuff like that. It can be a lot more uh, cut down, minimalist. Um, I'm intrigued actually. Let's have a quick look. So at the moment for my count for items, we're at 427 on the individual items i think yeah that's individual items and 1764 on the total now bearing in mind i've got things like this up here which i was placing out for working out stuff for the um the cooking challenge i've still got to do my snap for that um we have got things like we've got planted holes here we've got these um trees and stuff and lots of things that need picking up so we could definitely lower that count a bit i should think um <laughs> but uh yeah given that my valley is a bit of a mess i think if you kept on top of it you could cut that count down a little bit but it i guess it's good to know for people who um have got those limited counts like a switch and stuff like that that it's helpful and another way you can do it like obviously on the beach i've used every 
every single colour of beach chair I have, but I could change this so they're all one colour. It would still look good, but that way this number would be cut down as well. Again, with the kind of like beach towels, I could cut that down. The surfboards, I wouldn't necessarily have to use the two different types. I could use just one of these to be honest I, I wouldn't need the other and there you go you're already saving on your account um again i've got the two palm trees i could have kept them the same um and things like that so there's lots of ways that you can sort of um control your count in terms of how many items you've got in your valley while still doing builds for all the individual homes and everything like that so anyway this was a fun little challenge to do um i'm excited to see what i do decor wise with this valley because this is my new account save so i could really kind of experiment with how i decorate and stuff like that it's kind of nice having this extra valley so i can do um maybe some like different kind of style builds so we know for my main valley i want to go for a whole fairy core vibe um so having like this valley i can experiment i can try out different builds and things like that so yeah i'm I'm excited. We'll have to see what we can come up with and everything. Um, I think I'm it's going to so be good. Um, but yeah, I guess I will leave this video here. Hopefully it was inspiring and everything like that. Gave you a few ideas of different ways you can decorate and really make the most of any limited space that you might have available um, to kind of do these compact builds. Obviously, I didn't use any premium shop houses because at the end of the day, the choice to buy premium shop houses and whether you use them is a very individual basis. So I just wanted to kind of do the stuff that we're stuck with as mandatory. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little challenge I did and this little video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys!